first morning here in Argentina. Say I'm excited is a giant understatement. But we got in late last night, so we weren't able to check our rifles. So first thing we're gonna do is go make sure everything's still shooting on. I brought my 7LRM for basically everything, and then I brought my 375 for water buffalo too. So got both of them here. Hopefully they'll still be on from when I left Michigan, and if they are, we'll carry them both today. Just see, in case we do run into a water buffalo, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Well, this is gonna be a pretty, pretty cool and unique one just because I've got so many family members here. I've got dad and my brother Aaron and my nephew Alex. So it's gonna be a lot of bouncing between where everybody's going off today. We'll basically separate going to three different directions. Aaron and Alec will hunt together. Dad will hunt off the side and then I'll hunt over there. And plan is to come back in the afternoon and then at night and we'll make a new game plan of where everybody's going and what everybody's doing there. It is, it feels great. It's like mid fifties right now. It's supposed to get up to seventies. Left Michigan, it was snow and 30. Starting off to be a pretty good one. And they are both on two shots in the black. So, time to rock and roll. Well, we just got to the area that we're gonna hunt. There's a series of water holes and it's kind of rolling hills. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to scoot along the sides of these ridges and just keep glass and look at the water holes. This is a unique situation because the area hasn't been hunted in two years because of COVID. So it's ideal. There are a ton of animals in here. They're two years older than they normally would be. And the big one is they're not gonna be very spooky, which is gonna allow us just to kind of get the wind in our face, cruise these hills and just glass this whole area. The grass is extremely tall so we should be concealed as we move along it's yeah, it's ideal hunting conditions really seen a bunch of red stags. We came across this group. It was obviously that they were older, bigger bodied, carried the mass all the way out, saggy stomachs. And boy, I'm not sure exactly what he's got up top, but just an old red stag, exactly what you're looking for in a free range area like this. And it is thick once you get down here. The grass is high and just trying to get a shooting angle like that. You kind of take bits and pieces of the body. That one he had his full shoulder to me. Shot felt good, just gonna give him a couple minutes and we'll ease up there. Oh, look at that. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh, guy. <laughs> you definitely carried the mask. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Beautiful. Look at the palms. Yeah. So how old would one like this be? Uh, nine years at least. Wow. Nine, ten years at least. 
beautiful stuff. Free range red steak in La Pampa, Argentina. Has been a couple years off because of COVID. So we're the first hunters in here since 2020. And it shows because look at the mass on this stag right here. It's impressive. I can't even get my hands around up here, let alone down here. Wow. It's a gorgeous stag. Mark, mm -hmm. after the bush, these bushes, we have a huge uh, field mm -hmm. where blackbacks are almost all day long there. Okay. We used to see a couple of really big ones. If you want, we can try to go and check that field. Yeah. So just walk up this edge and then glass around the corner? Yeah, we're going to try that. Okay. okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's go. Pulled up here. I believe this is where Dad was this morning. We saw a couple good ones in this field. There's a reason that Charlie wanted to come back here. So Dad didn't get them this morning. Maybe I'll get lucky this afternoon. Hey Mark, 80 yards more, and it's a field. Okay. Take your time, and we're gonna try to see if the black box are there or not. Follow the females, you see them? Yeah, see to them. the right of them are two black bucks. Okay, I got them. Now. You see them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one on the left definitely looks heavier. I like the one to the left, it's heavier. So it looks like they're moving to the right. How do you want to get up there on them? Go to the border of the bush and we wait there until the females follow theirs. They move a little bit more, okay? okay. We must need to be careful of the females. giant black buck right there. There were two of them that were really big, but man, this one has mass that comes all the way up. I can't wait to go see him. Wow. Wow, very big. Look at the bases. Yeah. Wow. Deep core, good length, wide. It's deep. such a small body compared to what we yeah, are yeah, glassing yeah, them. Yeah, they yeah, look yeah, so yeah. much bigger. Yeah, so the only other spot I've hunted black buck was in Hawaii, and this one just dwarfs that one. Just so much bigger. The other one's probably about right here, which was great for Molokai where we were hunting, but just better genetics here. How, how, old, how old does it take a black buck, or how long does it take them to get their color on the, on the bucks? No, 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 they, they turn black every winter. Okay. Every winter. Okay. But, uh, to get a black one in this side, you need at least five to six years. Okay, so it's an old, it's a old, old one. Yeah, an amazing black buck here in Argentina. Well, we got about 45 minutes left to light here and Charlie knows that there's some big follow deer that kind of hit this field at the end here. So just as the last thing today, we're gonna ease down this two track, just get to where we can glass down there, see if they've came in tonight or not. I've seen a ton of fallow deer just looking for some really big ones. And the yeah. ones you've seen here have been really big. Huge. One of them is huge. Yeah. It's two big fallow there, but one is huge. Okay. We go for that one, okay? Perfect, sounds like a plan. At least. So we're just gonna ease up this road here again. We only got about 45 minutes left.
He's broadside right now, right? He's the one doing it. Yeah. yeah. Justin, you want him? Yep. <laughs> yeah, <definitely laughs> <was a big laughs> one. Man, yeah, it's a big one. That was a big one. That was a very big one. <laughs> very good, Mike. Yeah, let's go get, go take a close look at him here. Let's go. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh, great. <laughs> oh, smokes. Look at that. Man. Wow. How big he is. This is the one you've been seeing? This is yeah, the one. Yeah, it has to be. They we come almost every night to that field. It's a giant follow deer right here. And Charlie knew where they were at. They, they come out of, they must bed over here and come to this field right at night. Yeah, because these this friends, these scout friends, and they go to that field. And so it's kind of like, almost like you would think back home, whitetail, where they're in a bedding area hop across this, this little fence right here and then there's a cow pasture behind. If you think about it, it's got all the food that they need right here. And it must be patternable if you knew that they were crossing just like this almost every night. But man, that was pretty cool how it worked out just seeing them on the road like that as we were coming in. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What happened? Made me sit right in these things. <laughs> Alright. He's like a brand new man now. Are we talking here? What are we doing? Oh, I was, you can talk if you'd like. I'm talking if I'd like. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Um, give me some more about like, just because of the aspect of family and this one having to throw hunts back and forth. Plan is to come back in the afternoon and then at night and we'll make a new game plan of where everybody's going and what everybody's doing there. Like that? 